All right, my friends, so it's 32 years ago today, today, I left uh, my dad's apartment in, uh, in Alexander, Virginia. Uh, Master Sergeant Emmons, who's a bodybuilder, <laughs> took me to MEPS up in Baltimore, Maryland, and I processed to go to Fort Benning. Uh, November 22nd, 1988. Man, 32 years ago, I was 18, I just turned 18, and uh, Sergeant Emmons wasn't too happy with me because I was supposed to have done that uh, three months previous, uh, but I was in trouble with the law. And I had to get that settled up first. Uh, but I remember when he came and got me, he was like, we, uh, we're good this time? I said, yeah, yeah. And so long story short, I went to uh, where we got in the, in the MEPS, the Military Entry Processing Center or Service or Station, I think, up in Baltimore. You get the, uh, you know, the, the assigned guys who are all going to, uh, I can't remember, some were going to Fort Jackson, some were going to uh, Benning. I don't think we're all going to Benning. Anyway, so what happened was you go to Atlanta. So from Baltimore to Atlanta, and then from Atlanta, the bus comes and take you to uh, to, Columbus, to Fort Benning, Columbus. And I just remember, I'd, I mean, hell, I'd only been on a plane like once at that point in my life. You know, that was like the second time I've ever been on a plane. Yeah, something like that. And, uh. It was an interesting experience, man. And uh, anyway, we get to Atlanta, we go to the hotel, and uh, me and this guy from um, Bel Air, Maryland, <laughs> we go we we go down to uh, I don't know whatever the part. I guess it was Buckhead back then it was like the party place. And uh, we uh, Pablo, Pablo, come here. And uh, long story short, we missed our bus to go to Fort Benning. And so we showed up a day late, and let's just put it this way. Everyone else was uh, sitting in line. Me and this guy show up in Fort Benning late because we missed our bus because we had uh, party too much the night before. <laughs> Not a good start to my military career, let's just put it that way. So we get to Benning, and we were the, uh, the transient, so to speak, and, man, we got reamed. I'll never forget, we get in there. They're all in formation. They're all like in their uniforms and stuff, and you know, they had already been through this a day before, and now it's just me and this guy. And I had this book called The Casco Deception, which is a friggin' awesome book. It's about Peaks Island, about the Nazis coming to Peaks Island and infiltrating. It's, it's a great book, but it had like a, a swastika on the front. It's, uh, it's a great book, uh, you know, showing basically how Hitler could have infiltrated, you know, main islands and whatnot. And, uh, I, and I was reading that book, and it you know, had a swastika on there, like a lot of Hitler or uh, Nazi uh, World War II-ish books do. Kind of like, you know, the Southern Civil War books have the, the Confederate and the American flags, the same kind of thing here. And uh, the drill sergeant tore me up. He said, oh, so you're a little Nazi. I said, no, it's just a book. He goes, oh, did I say, oh, my goodness. I said, oh, I am not in the right place. Anyway, so I get my gear, and, uh, and I, look, I've never put, look, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'll never forget this guy named Rush. Rush Smith from Beckley, West Virginia. And I'm not sure if he's still out there or not. Weird guy, weird guy. Um, but he's a good guy. And uh, I remember I was trying to put my stuff together. He goes like, hey, uh, let me help you. I said, yeah, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. He goes, hey, I'm not a drill sergeant. You seem all nervous. And I am nervous. So I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want anyone yelling at me. You know what I'm saying? And I just, he goes, well, I'm not your drill sergeant. I'll help you. And I was just an S sandwich the whole time. I was an S sandwich. Uh, <laughs> 32 years ago crazy when we were going to the rifle range i think it was two weeks in we go to the rifle range i couldn't hit the broad side of a barn man if i was five feet away and it turns out the reason was because i guess i'm left eye dominant and but you're but i'm right arm i'm a right you know i throw my right i kick with my left but i throw my right so you think you're you're right eye dominant, but I'm not. So what I was doing is I was looking through the barrel with my left. So the firearm that would be the butt stocks rest on your shoulder here. I've never fired a firearm. I'm looking through with my left eye. I couldn't hit anything. And I remember as our it was like the night before we're getting ready to uh, go to our qualification. And I'll never forget Sergeant Shields, Sergeant First Class Shields, a short guy, short black guy, but I liked him a lot. He was a good guy, and he. Uh, he, he looked out for me. I, you know, there's no other way around that. And uh, he says, "Scan, look, man, you gotta, we gotta get you squared away. We can't, because if you don't pass, you get recycled." And I said, "Man, I don't want to get recycled. I got no, I got nowhere to go. You know, I mean, that's the thing. I had nowhere to go. It's kind of like you burned your bridges. You know, how I talk about that. And here, I was like, look, I can't. I got, there's nothing for me back in. I, I got nothing. This is it." And uh, it was it was depressing. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, it's just I was just like, there's nothing for me. I got nothing back in Virginia. And my mom was still in Maine. 
my um, my uh, my dad was in Virginia, but we had just moved there from Maryland. Just you know, like well, he had. He thought I was moving. He thought I was already gonna be in the army. So he had just moved to Virginia, like um, like a month before. And I, I had no friend. I had nothing. Nothing going on. Just a freaking loser. And I'm sitting there thinking, what if I don't pass? I remember for like nights, I was just like worried. And then uh, so he goes, well. And then he stayed with me late one night on the range one night, but later with me on the range. He, and finally, he said, uh. I couldn't hit it. He goes, oh. he goes, are your glasses good? I said, I don't know, man. I said, I, yeah, because they give you these military glasses, which uh, <laughs> birth control glasses, because you look like ugly. But anyway, um, he said, I, and then he finally said, let me see. And finally he saw, he goes, dude, you're shooting from your wrong eye. I said, what? Oh. He goes, shoot from this eye. Open this eye. Close this eye. Open this eye. And then I was fine. After that, I, hit, you know, I think I hit 38 out of 40 or something like that. I was like, okay. And that was it. And then after that, I was fine. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'll never forget that. For like the first, like the week of range, you know, we're firing the M16 and I couldn't hit nothing. It was embarrassing. And so we had to go to remedial training. Me and this guy named Shinsky, he was from Ohio. Um, we call him caveman. It's just a short guy. He looked like a caveman. Nice guy. I'm sure he's a nice, I mean, nice guy, but he just, he, he didn't, he just, uh, he didn't seem that to be the sharpest knife, you know what I'm saying? And and I'm as me and Shinsky have to sit in the uh, the remedial rifle range where everybody else is just hanging out. And I was like, oh, this sucks. And everybody knew you're kind of an S sandwich too, so it's just like you had no respect. And it's just it's tough, man. The other way around that, and you know, all my stuff was just I was a, I mean, but you know it's a problem. The thing is, you just keep at it. You keep at it. I'll never forget, there's a guy named Cryer who's a good guy, and I could not figure out for the life of me how to uh, put my chemical, my NBC mask on. He had these masks you had to wear on your side, and mine kept falling off, and I said, I can't figure out how to tell you. He goes, oh, here's what you do. You know, I mean, that's how bad of an ass sandwich I was. That's all, man. I know whoever that guy named Cryer was, you know, whoever Shinsky was, I mean, I remember these guys, Drill Sergeant uh, Shields, uh, Smith from Beckley, West Virginia. I remember them all, man. And they're all helped to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'll never forget Cryer. I said, how do I do this? There's this guy named Cryer and his Cryer and Bowman. I just remember both those guys are always together, Cryer and Bowman. And, uh, you know, just, I, I think they might have been friends from wherever the hell they were from. Anyway, and Cryer said, I just do it like this. I said, I said, he goes, yeah, man. And I said, he wasn't like a dick. But there's another guy who I won't name who, who I couldn't figure out how to do something. He goes, Scam, how can you? just all, you know, like, making fun. I said, dude, I don't know. I've never done this before. The point was, you just stick to it, man. You're going to get some arrows. Anything you, Anytime you try something new, you're going to get some arrows thrown your way. You just got to be thick enough skin to say, I, I don't care. Uh, you got, and the way you do that is you say, there is no, there's nowhere else for me to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, wasn't it Richard Gere in that one stupid movie, Officer and a Gentleman, when the guy, uh, the black guy, the drill sergeant in the Navy, was like, he's out in the rain. He's like, I'll kick you out, and Rich, why, do you, why don't you quit? And, and Richard Gere says, I got nowhere else to go, or something like that. That's how I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen the movie. I just remember seeing the clip. Maybe actually even I see the clip when we're going down there. I can't remember. But I was like, that was me. I had nowhere else to go. Well, I mean, it's like I can't fail at this because there's nothing else for me. Anyway, and then you know, fast forward 32 years, and here I am. I'm, trust me, I am still an, ex, an excrement sandwich. But I'm an excrement sandwich with 32 years of experience, of living, of of trying new things, of uh, of learning, and it's uh it's just I, I think in some ways our culture creates this uh, mentality where it's a risk is a bad thing, like a failure is a bad thing, like if you don't know or if you're laughed at, that's a bad thing. And sometimes you gotta, you just need to fail. Sometimes you need to be laughed at. Because it'll also give you that drive. And like, for, let me give you, it's like, I was always been cock strong in terms of, I, you know, I could outmarch any of these clowns. I mean, even when I was in ranger school, man, I was freaking carrying the spare bow and tri bar all the way up and down the mountains of Dahlonega while these other people were falling out. They might have been better at me in terms of, you know, how to put together a, a patrol, an infantry attack or something like that. But in terms of just being, you know, a mule, I was, I was better. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, when we got spot reports, you had to kind of, Essentially, you're narking on your squad. Who you call peer? Oh, it's peer report. Excuse me. Who's the peers that you vote for that should pass? I always had decent peer reviews, if that makes sense. And the reason was because they know they could rely on me. They said, "Well, we can give Scanlon all the freaking gear. He'll hump it." You know what I'm saying? Spare bill, tripod, other people. Pablo.
were falling out. So I always got high, well, I don't say high, but decent peers. And my peers always uh, gave me good ratings. Where I got bad ratings was, you know, I don't, uh, I, I talk back. <laughs> and I don't know by, you know, my butt from a hole in the ground when it comes to designing tactical units uh, in terms of putting people in ambush positions and leading them through the woods at three o'clock in the morning when you're getting rained on when you haven't slept for freaking two weeks and you're only eating one meal a day in Delano, Georgia. So the three things in ranger school, one was peer reports. I did fine there. The other two were, um, you know, your, uh, ranger instructors, uh, what they think about you. I did horrible there. And then, uh, of course I always failed by patrols too. <laughs> But I always felt good that at least my peers had somewhat respect for me. If they respect me as a leader, they respected me as part of the unit. I mean, I'll never forget, man. These guys were falling out like crazy. And I said, ah, we had a, the spare barrel is what you put the, uh, so the M60, when you're firing it, you know, you're putting lots of rain, uh, rounds down range. It gets, it gets hot, too hot. And so you got to change it out uh, because you got to, it gets too hot, it'll melt essentially. And what you always got to be careful, you have to have this glove because if you touch the barrel with your hand, it'll burn your hand. I, I, that didn't quite happen to me, but I think I might have got where I, I can't remember. I remember hurting myself, but it wasn't that bad. But you, you'll see people like grabbing the barrel for, without remembering that you know, they put a thousand rounds down range and it, it'll burn their hands. It's, it's freaking, ugh, it's hot. So you got to change out the barrel. And that's a heavy piece of, I guess, a steel. I'm not sure what it is, steel, iron. Uh, and then you have a tripod which is what you mount the so the m60 has got a, a bipod um you know just the two things where you kind of hold it on your shoulder and then there's a tripod where it's like you when you're in a, like a, a defensive unit like a foxhole where you can kind of swivel swivel around and stuff and, and both those things are heavy and then you got a thousand rounds and stuff like that and then you got the m60 as well the m60 is a freaking heavy piece of equipment so i mean i mean i carried that all over the place i hated it but it's just like i knew that was my only way to <laughs> Because I couldn't contribute otherwise. Oh, man, it's crazy. But anyway, the point was, I was an S sandwich. And then a year and a half later, I'm in ranger school. I didn't pass, but I'm still glad I went. I'm still glad I went. I mean, in some way, I'm kind of glad I didn't pass because I don't know where I'd be today if I did pass, frankly. I must read up, and I, I just, I'm glad where I'm at. That's the thing. You take your defeats. And you, and you learn from them, if that makes sense. And if you are in a good place today, everything that has transpired in your life led you to where you are today. If you are in a good place, you should be grateful for all this stuff. You should be grateful for all these things you went through because it puts you where you are today. I am grateful for everything I've went through. If I'm in a bad place, well, everything I've gone up to this point has put me where I am, but I still have a, point, a chance to fix it. If you're in a bad place where you are right now, fix it. It's on you to fix it. You live in a freaking America, man. Get off your tush, stop whining, and fix it. Now, there's some people who can't fix it. You know, they, they have paraplegic. They got, uh, yeah, they smoke too much dope and their brains are shot. I get all that. That's not most of us. And I guarantee if you're watching this YouTube channel, you're not one of those people. Fix it. If you're not in a good place, don't say, oh, well, all my past indiscretions have put me here. My mom or whatever. Don't get off your butt and fix it. If you're, but you're in a good place, stop saying, ooh, ooh, but say, fine, I am glad for all the things that happened to me. 32 years ago, i never forget, there's a guy named, I forgot his name, man. I want to say it was Ross. I think it was Ross. And uh, we got into the unit late, and the night before, because we were late, because we missed that bus to go to Benning, we had to stay in some, uh, like a temporary quarters. That was on Thanksgiving Day. And um, they had the uh, the colonel or something like that came through. Were you Harmony Church or Sand Hill? I think it was Sand Hill is what we're at. It's 1988, and uh, he was shining his shoes, his boots. And uh, and I, I was like, man, I don't want. To, why you gotta shine? You're just gonna go out in the field. Didn't make sense. And he was doing it to to kind of kiss butt, if that makes sense. And I, yeah, I just it was stupid. Like some of these guys would take a real shine to their boots and it looked good but it's like i never understood why you did it and then and then lo and behold you start doing that too because you're like sitting there drinking beer smoking cigarettes this is when you got to your unit and you just had the football game once they only do some spit shine but i'll never forget I'm sitting there thinking man this guy's an ass kisser shining his boots as we're getting ready to go to the freaking you know base of training those things are get scuffed up even i saw that a mile away and i'm sure it didn't do them any good but it was just kind of funny but they did look good compared to mine um, because I just, you know, took the thing and, but, uh, anyway, a lot of people would, 
with kiss butt kick like kiss butt by shining him with spit shine spit shine in a three-piece suit anyway i hope and i actually do take a good shine to my shoes when i'm uh that's one other thing you can learn my friends if you're a man and you're wearing a suit or trying to look good in a professional environment take a shine to your shoes you don't have to spit shine them but man buff those suckers out the first thing most people are going to recognize you especially for people who served in the military they're going to look at your shoes and if your shoes are scuffy that means you're not you don't pay attention to detail shine you know buff you don't have to spit shine them but shine those suckers out buff them out man the shoes are the most important thing as a military person will recognize on a man on a woman i don't know how that works but on a man if you guys i've i've, I've interviewed people has scuffy shoes at usa even has scuffy shoes i said dude and they come in looking good on their suits but then their shoes are scuffy i said that's uh -uh, that can't work all right Anyway, 32 years ago today, you got a military experience? Let's hear your story, man. Put in the notes. How long you been out? What unit were you in? What branch of service? And uh, I love hearing stories about this, What, how military changed people's lives. All right, we'll see you.